Welcome back. It is Wednesday, September 25th, and the MLB, our three best bets are on the way. It's Austin, joined by Logan today. Joined by your guys' favorite special guest, get it out, Logan. The broom is here. A 3 0 sweep yesterday, and all three winners were pretty easy. We had Nationals plus one and a half. Great call, Logan. Uh, Nats covered, and they didn't even score a single run. Great job, guys. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Parlay of the day was pretty sweat free. Vladdy and Otani to get a hit. We'll have another hit parlay later today. And Michael King under an ounce. Pretty sweat free. As sweat free as an under an ounce that can really get us. He did finish five innings, but Pro was at like 60 pitches after the third. So we certainly will take it a three and a sweep, Logan. Today we need to do the exact same thing. We're going to try our best to go three and now. As always, we appreciate you guys for supporting us. Drop a like, subscribe. Later on today, we'll have two NFL videos dropping. One will drop at noon. That'll be Logan and I talking through the whole Sunday slate, giving you our favorite spreads, totals, money lines that we like um, as always if you want to go check that out like i said 12 p.m eastern time today we'll talk through every game it's a little bit longer video but we timestamp all the games so if you're curious how we feel about your favorite team certainly tap into that and later tonight we'll let thursday night football video cowboys giants our best bets over there but you guys came in for mlb picks and we need to lock in first pick of the day no surprise the parlay of the day is back yesterday odds checker did a little bit uh, a long time to post it it was just the hit parlay i don't know why it took a long time to edit it but either way it'll be live down below in the pinned comment in the description and we tweeted out as well so it should be live i don't know what time yesterday it took a while but normally they're quicker on it normally around 9 30 to 10 a.m eastern time tap into that will be another two-leg hit parlay but logan you've been on a heater I love your pick today, and I'm just going to let you uh, – the floor is yours. Where are you rolling uh, for tonight's pick? Yeah, it's going to be a late-night West Coast game. This game was electric last night. I hope there's it's not as electric tonight. I'm taking the Rangers and Athletics under 7.5. Minus 108 odds on FanDuel is your best value there. Now this game ended up going over. and The A's won 5-4 to four on a walk-off win. That was an emotional win for the A's. Obviously, this is their last series in Oakland. So they're playing with a lot of heart, a lot of passion in this one. But you know, sometimes when you have an emotional high of a win like that, the next game can be a little bit of different different emotions and, and it could be a potential flat spot. I'm not saying they, they come out and roll over, but I just don't see as many runs today. And let's talk about these two starters who I am comfortably back and we get the battle of the lefties. Brady, Brady Basso starts for the A's, 2.33 ERA and a 1.09 whip for him. This is his second home start, but since becoming a starter, he's had shutouts in two of his first three starts. His most recent start, he looked a little bit human. You know, he gave up some runs in that one. But so far, Basso's very tough on, on lefties. He's only allowing a .095 batting average to lefties. I don't know exactly what the Rangers lineup's going to look like. I still imagine there's going to be a few lefties in there just because, like, those are some of those bats that are in there every night. So I think they're still going to have some lefties in there, and I like to see that he is tough on that side of the plate if you're a lefty and you're getting rocked by both sides of the plate, like what, what are you good for, right? Basso has been pretty good at not walking batters and missing barrels. Two things that I think are, are what are stats you want to look at. If you're backing a pitcher for an under, I mean, you cannot be putting free guys on and you cannot be getting barreled up and getting those hard hit extra base hits. Knock on wood so far. So good for Basso, obviously still a small sample size. He hasn't been a starter that long, but I like what I'm seeing so far from him. And he's facing a Rangers offense. I mentioned yesterday with the Royals, there are some teams that flat out cannot hit lefties consistently. Rangers are struggling. I mean, they're only hitting 149 against lefties this month. That is absolutely atrocious. I, If you look at the last 14 days versus lefties, Rangers 26th in batting average and OPS, 25th in WRC+. Plus. So they're about middle, or they're about almost back of the pack to last in left-handed uh, against lefties and they're facing one today i do not see where the the offense is going to come from for the rangers especially a team that's sort of mailed it in on the season i mean let's be honest they you know you win the world series one year and then the next year you're missing the dang playoffs tough tough look for the rangers i think basso's deals in this one and then on the other side it's going to be cody bradford starting for the rangers 3.59 era and a 0 0.094 whip I like what I've seen from, from Cody Brown for most of his starts. Every now and then he'll throw in your, your dud that you don't want to see. But I still think, you know, for the Rangers to be priced as road favorites in this role, I think Bradford pitches well. Look, if I'm looking at the money line in this game, obviously it's a it's a slight pick em, more little more juice to the Rangers side. For them to be priced like that, I mean, and, and Cody Bradford, if he were to not have a good start, I would be very shocked in this one, especially since he's faced the A's twice this season. He's had their number in both of them. Seven innings pitched, two earned run, eight strikeouts. Six and two thirds innings pitched, zero earned runs, seven strikeouts. So he's he's dealt against the A's before. I think he can once again 
have have another solid outing, especially because he's coming off a seven inning pitch shutout as well. I, he's he seems to be in good form for me, at least in that start he was. Hopefully he continues to roll with that. If you look at his his you know advanced metrics, 98th percentile walk percentage, love that. I mentioned I do not like pitchers that put on free base runners and 73rd percentile on chase percentage. He is getting swing and a miss outside of the zone, and I think that's big against an ace team that can get a little bit feisty at the plate sometimes. Oakland's team total is set to only three and a half at even odds. And to me, that looked low. I was like, man, it just feels kind of easy to come out and pick A's team total over today. I mean, they just hit it last night. They're playing inspired ball in, in Oakland. But believe it or not, they've only hit that over in five of their last 10 games. So it's not as consistent as you think. I think Bradford still has a decent showing. Last 14 days versus lefties, Oakland, 17th in batting average and OPS, 13th in WRC+. plus. So about middle of the pack offensively against lefties there nothing crazy they're not top five they're they're not even you know top three i think i think bradford has a solid sh showing in this one and then we go to the bullpens i'm hoping and praying bradford can give us six solid innings maybe even seven that would be cool but rangers 30th in bullpen era oakland 16th in bullpen era yeah i mean the rangers bullpen bad there's nothing else that I, I could possibly say if the, if the Rangers bullpen scares you that much, you can take the first five under, but it can't be me taking the first five under. I've had terrible success in first five totals this season, so I have I have just given up on them. I read the full game line. It was set to, it's set low, but I believe it's set low for a reason. I see we think we see a little bit of a pitching duel in this one. Give me the under in, in that Oakland game. But also, you got a team total for us. Where are you going? Yeah, Logan's rooting for no runs late. I'm going to be rooting for a lot of runs late. So you have a little bit of a compromise late on in the evening because I'm going to another late night game. I'm going to the Arizona Diamondbacks. I'm taking their team total over four and a half, currently minus 125 on Fanatics. I want to say FanDuel and DraftKings were minus 130. So not a big difference here. We needed the D-backs to put up five runs today. Um, I considered full game team total or full game over. Uh, but when I look at this Giants team, they're coming off scoring 11 runs. They're coming off hitting five homers yesterday. Normally teams that just happen to swing for the fences and everything went right yesterday. The next day they come out flat. They're facing Zach Gallen, a guy that has had their number. At least he threw six uh, no-hit innings the last time you saw them, I believe early into September or in August. I don't trust him at all. You've seen the Giants offense. I feel like this could be a final score of like six to two. And I'd be kicking myself if I took the full game over, whereas I could have just taken team total with the D-backs, which is what I'm going to do. Now, starting for the D-backs or against the D-backs will be Mason Black. We've talked about Black before. We tried to fade him in his last start. He went five and two thirds, zero earned runs versus the Royals. Now that we've seen what the Royals have done over the last week or so, I don't think it counts. It should not count on his on his record. It should be an asterisk because that team is terrible right now. The Royals are just, they're hard to watch. And that helped us out yesterday. But Black, he's not good. He owns a 6.13 expected ERA and a 293 expected batting average. His ground ball rate, very low. His barrel percentage, very low. And the D-backs are a team that are in desperate need of a win. They've now lost three straight. They've lost both the games so far in this series. Yesterday, they got shut out, scored zero, and they went 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. Sounds very similar to when I took it over in a D-backs game when they were in Colorado. They did nothing for me. They went, I don't know if it was 0 for 7, identical to that, but they sucked with runners in scoring position there. What happened the next game? We took their team total over. And they hit it in the second inning. They scored six runs. Now, that's in Colorado, sure. But they've been one of the best offenses in September, averaging the most runs, or at least they were most runs per game prior to yesterday. And I think they come back and they have some sort of uh, some sort of answer for Mason Black. This is a must-win spot for him. And I don't normally like the bank. I know this team needs to win. So I can kind of talk, touch on yesterday. Just because you need to win doesn't mean you do win. But I do think this is a spot where this is a got to be a win for the D-backs. Got your ace on the mound. You got to lock in at night going into today with a good game plan against Mason Black, a guy who I think is not that great. And we've seen in September versus righties, D-backs have been really good. Sixth in batting average, fourth in walk percentage, fourth in OPS, and fifth in WRC+. Plus. They've obviously been cooked by Birdsong. He only gave up two yesterday and or two days ago, and then Logan Webb went out there for six shutout innings. I think this is the day we could see them honestly tag Mason Black for four or five. That wouldn't shock me at all. Maybe they only get two, three off of him, and we need some runs off the bullpen. I think they get to the Giants bullpen as well. Obviously, a lot of familiarity there because they've seen these arms a ton of different times, not just in this series, but in previous series. And I'm not really too scared of the Giants bullpen, but I think a lot of the runs come early. So if you want to take first five team total, you can. I just like Logan has had terrible success with first five totals. I've had terrible success with first five team totals at two and a half. 
feels like they always give me two. And then in the sixth inning, they give me they give me three runs, and that doesn't help me. So in this case, would help us. They only want to score two through five and then pour it on in the sixth. Go for it. I really like the D-backs on the team total today. I don't mind him on the money line or the run line, but I don't want to trust their pitching. Zach Gellin, when I back him, he gets he has his worst stuff ready. He's like, oh, Austin's backing me. I got my nice meatball fired up. Nope, I'm out. Give me the D-backs. Just give me their team total over four and a half. The full game goes over. Cool. I only need the home team to put up some Brent's tonight. So those are our favorite picks of the day. Let's try to bring out the brooms once again. D-backs team total over four and a half. Logan's pick. Rangers A's under seven and a half. And then our parlay of the day, once it is live, will be live down below in the pinned comment in the description. Logan and I are going to go choose our favorite two hitters. Each get a hit. Yesterday, sweat free with Vladi and Otani. We'll see what we cook up today for y'all, but definitely check it out. Pin comment in description. And when our two NFL videos are live, I will link them on the screen for you guys to check out. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Let's bring out the brooms and we'll see you guys back tomorrow with some more picks. Peace.